Welcome everyone. Uh, my name is Kevin Pappas. I am the training manager here at 1OC. Um, if you've been on any of our webinars the past couple of weeks, I'm sure uh, you've seen me, but it's nice to meet you all. Um, we're a smaller group today, but we're excited to hear from Kimberly Harnish, our volunteer services infrastructure manager, who's going to be sharing on volunteer recognition, uh, specifically how do you recognize your volunteers virtually during this time. Um, but I did want to let you know before we kick it off to Kimberly that we have a variety of other webinars um, that are happening this week. So we actually have one on insurance and how to save money on your premiums and different uh, things that you need to know about your insurance policies and claims during COVID-19 on Thursday. And we also have a marketing and strategy uh, webinar coming up on Friday. So if you're interested in any of those, those are available on our nonprofit resource page. I also wanted to make you all aware that we are doing something called office hours at 1OC. And what that is, is basically it's a 15 minute consultation uh, with one of our nonprofit experts to walk you through some specific questions related to your organization. So it can be relevant to organizational strategy, um, engaging your board, um, doing some more of the financial side, doing your cost benefit analysis, working on the HR compliance. We have uh, our specialists that can support you in all those different areas. So if you have some specific questions that haven't been covered in our webinars, I'd recommend uh, signing up for one of those consultations. Again, it's just on our resource page. Um, and it is free, so it's something that 1OC is providing um, to all of our nonprofits. So uh, we're really excited with all the different resources that are out there, and specifically today, um, to learn more about volunteer recognition. So I'll go ahead and pass it off to Kimberly and take it away. All right, welcome everyone. I'm so happy to have you all with joining us today. Um, I am, I have been with 1OC for about three and a half years. I'm the Volunteer Services Infrastructure Manager here, and um, what that, the simple terms of what that means is I oversee our AmeriCorps VIP program. Um, so what I get to do every day is work with our AmeriCorps fellows um, that are serving out in our nonprofits, um, supporting their volunteer programs, helping them to build their volunteer infrastructure. So some of what I'm sharing today is some of the things that we have talked about as an AmeriCorps group in ways that they can um, support their organizations and really help with the the much needed volunteer recognition that um, that we'll be doing. So um, welcome everyone and I'm excited to uh, work with you today. And I think that um, before we get started with anything else, um, I would love for Kevin to go ahead and kick off the poll that we um, have put together. I am. So I see that 40% have not done anything yet. 30% um, have, have done it one to two times in the last six weeks and 30% three or more times. Awesome. Um, what, will we be able to use some of this information towards the end of the presentation? Uh, nobody is the queen or king of, all, of virtual recognition. I was hoping to meet one, but um, <laughs> I guess we will all become kings and queens at the end of this presentation. Um, so thank you for chiming in. Uh, all right, so today we will be providing some strategies for keeping your volunteers feeling engaged and appreciated, exploring ways to leverage technology to recognize your volunteers, and then we'll talk a little bit about something 1OC is doing, which is a virtual volunteer challenge and, and really challenging ourselves and our, um, our own followers to become social volunteer influencers. So we'll talk a little bit about that towards the end. Also, as um, kind of a disclaimer, I love to see faces. So if I'm looking off to the side, it's because I'm looking at all of your little faces that I love to see so much. Um, and so I'm sorry if I'm not looking directly into the camera. And as always, I appreciate and thank you in advance for any grace and technology issues that I might have. Um, one thing, one more thing that I'd like to do before we get started um, is if I can have you all just think really quickly about um, a time that you were appreciated, not virtually, but a time that you were appreciated or thanked um, or given some kind of a, um, of a uh, recognition. Um, think about that time and if you can just kind of note it and put it to the side um, we are going to talk about that at the very end. So a time that you were thanked, uh, appreciated, and or recognized in your organization um, and what that was. So I'll give you just a couple of seconds to jot that down or think about it. Uh, 
All right. And we're going to hold that off and we'll talk about that a little later. Um, so first of all, why recognize volunteers? I think, of course, giving thanks is something that um, we all appreciate and it's something that we, um, we really know that needs to be done. But I think in this time and thinking about COVID-19 and what we're going through and um, I think one of the most important reasons to recognize your volunteers is to try to keep them, try to retain them, um, make them make them realize and feel that they are making such a huge difference in your organization so that they want to stay and help you rebuild if there's rebuilding happening or help you recover if there is some kind of recovery that's going to need to happen after, um, after hopefully this ends soon. Um, so really it is a time to think about the sustainability of your nonprofit um, and really trying to keep and retain those uh, volunteers that already love your organization. Um, so some strategies for recognizing your volunteers. Number one is to make it a priority. I think, um, especially during this time, it, it's, we're thinking about the 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 day-to-day -day things, the operational things that are so important. I mean, some of us are worried about finances. Are we going to get our loan? Um, all of those things. But it's really important to make it a priority to recognize your volunteers or keep that at, at the top of your mind um, so that they're not accidentally forgotten. Not that we don't want to recognize them, but sometimes we just get so caught up. Um, so it's really important to try to make that a priority and also make sure there's someone in your organization, likely you all that are on the call or somebody else that can be the one to make sure that um, that recognition is happening or at least thinking about it and planning for it. Um, be timely. So, um, you know, Although we happen to be in Volunteer Appreciation Week and Global Mo Volunteer Appreciation Month, um, try not to wait till those special occasions to thank your volunteers um, or not wait till the start of a new project and say, oh, thanks so much for what you did last year. Can you do it again this year? Um, really uh, being timely in terms of right when they're done with a task or when they're done with a long project, um, finding a way to recognize them at that time. And then also recognizing contributions, big and small. Um, you know, I feel like there's nothing too small if somebody wants to help and somebody really loves your organization. Um, even if you have somebody with a, just, they have a positive attitude. That's enough to thank. You know, send somebody a message saying, you know, thank you so much for, um, for bringing positivity at a time when I'm feeling super stressed. Um, so it really does take these little small contributions to, to help us move forward and to help us to continue to thrive. Um, and then also, not just thanking your superstars. You're always going to have a superstar, somebody that's going way above and beyond at all times. Um, but thank those that maybe aren't as outspoken or aren't as um, putting themselves out there as much. Maybe they're waiting to see, get a little bit of validation or a little bit of approval from you. and. Um, and then they can help to step it up a little bit more. And then including all staff in your recognition. Um, you know, as if you're volunteer managers, you know that you are definitely not the only one who is interacting with your volunteers. Often you're bringing them in, you're recruiting them, um, but then you're, you're kind of handing them off to their staff person, maybe the marketing department or you know, the training department or whatever areas that they are um, that they are fulfilling. So it's important to include all of the staff in any recognition effort, uh, which also means training staff how to uh, recognize their volunteers. So um, making sure that your staff are, are educated and, and can carve in that time to provide some kind of recognition so that the volunteers hear it from them. Um, I do have a short video here that I wanted to share because how wonderful is it as a volunteer to be recognized by the CEO um, or the executive director or, you know, the director of programs of your organization. It, it says something a little bit extra. Um, so let's see. Hopefully the video will work. And this is um, an example from Girl Scouts. Hello, everyone. Sylvia Acevedo here. In recognition of Girl Scouts Volunteer Appreciation Month, I'm honored to take this opportunity to express my deepest gratitude 
between your ongoing dedication, passion, and collaborative spirit in serving as the lifeblood of our organization. A movement is only as powerful as the people who embody it. And as the front line for our organization and its elemental mission, you stand as the very embodiment of the Girl Scout vision. In your efforts to establish a warm, safe, welcoming environment for girls to fully develop their leadership potential, your work reflects the transformative power of our brand. We recognize your tremendous time investment. Thank you, again, for your boundless commitment and service as together we venture with purpose into the future. Hopefully you all saw that, okay? It's just a simple little example of how you can get your CEO or your, your executive team involved. Um, hopefully you also have someone who knows how to do great videos. <laughs> Maybe a volunteer. Um, inclusion and impact. So, um, again, as you know, volunteers, they, they come into service uh, with various motivations, and some of them really want to know how they're making a difference in your organization. Um, so... I think it's a great best practice to jot down some notes in terms of numbers and impact that they have um, been able to provide for your organization. Um, you know, were they instrumental in helping to pack a thousand food bags for your clients? Or, um, you know, did they create a really great video to share your CEO saying thank you? Like, what are those things that they did that really made a difference? Um, you know, volunteers really want to know that they're a part of your organization and a part of your team. Um, so I think another great way is to make sure that they're included in things that um, is appropriate for them to be included in. Um, at 1OC, we include all of our um, all of our volunteers in our staff meetings. Um, now they're virtual meetings, but it's really nice for them to have an opportunity to be able to speak up or to share insight. Um, from their volunteer perspective, and um, and it, it makes them more invested in your organization. Um, or if if maybe there it's not appropriate for them to be a part of staff meetings, maybe you're sending out you know a weekly impact report or something that you're emailing out to your your staff that they can be a part of, so they can also feel like they know what's going on and they understand the state of the organization. Um, invite them to be a part of decision making, whether they are leading committees or auxiliary groups, things like that. Um, volunteers, again, have a different perspective sometimes because they're not so sucked into the weeds, that they have opportunities to be creative and, um, and really add to uh, what your organization and mission is really trying to do. Um, and then here, I think really considering your volunteers' motivation for volunteering is super important. Um, preference, their preferences may drive how they feel about recognition. So some of us, you know, if somebody get, pays you a compliment, you kind of cringe like, oh, oh my gosh. Um, some of us love it and we're, we share it to the world. Um, but one size definitely doesn't fit all. One person's reward may be another's total embarrassment. We don't know. We don't know that when they come in it's really kind of our um our judgment and our and our own kind of um, intuition that we have when we're meeting volunteers and getting to know them and building relationships with them to really kind of figure out what type of recognition is great for this particular volunteer or this group if it's a company um, why are they coming in um, and how can i best recognize them in our volunteer management certificate training at 1OC, um, there is a section on volunteer motivation, and there's also a quiz there where you can take a little quiz to see what your motivation is for serving. Um, but the three main motivations, which are adapt which are from um, Nick Leland and Atkinson's motivational theory, um, are that volunteers come in for affiliation reasons. Um, they want to be a part of a group, part of a team. They want to hang out with people and have fun. Um, and so I put in parentheses uh, for recognition, parties and people. Um, that's a great way to recognize them. Folks that are motivated by achievement, they are really um, wanting to know what kind of impact are they having? Um, what are they doing that's making a difference? Are they checking off um, the check boxes? Are they helping to fulfill those really important goals? So awards and action are great for achievement. 
Um, and then power. Those that are motivated by power really is, is more wanting to be acknowledged for their leadership. So those are going to be folks that are great to have lead your auxiliary groups and lead your, your, uh, your um, committee groups and things like that. So influence and impact is really great for um, those who are, are motivated by power. And then lastly, make it meaningful. Um, again, in, in learning and, and knowing what your volunteers are coming in for and really building relationships with them, um, really get to know them. Know what they like. Are they gardeners? Do they love to garden? Um, are they artsy? Um, what are their, their personal interests that you can tap into to recognize them when it comes time to recognize? Um, but there's nothing like getting a gift or a, a thank you that is very personal and knowing that, gosh, they really know me or they really listen. You know, when I talked about how much I love traveling, you know, they, they remember that um, and things like that. So this type of a, of a gift, uh, of course, is not virtual. So my little pro tip at the bottom is to modify your typical gift ideas to something that is virtual or easily mailed. So maybe you have a volunteer that loves to garden, so you can mail them some seeds, you know, and, and send them a nice thank you note with those seeds. We're going to go into lots more details in the next section. Um, but for now, what questions um, or thoughts or insights do you have? Any questions? Please go ahead and type them in the chat, and then hopefully Kevin can help us um, pull those up if there are any questions at this point. Haven't seen any questions come in yet, Kimberly, but we'll give everyone 30 seconds. If you have anything at this point, go ahead and type it in. All right, are we good? Yep. All right, so now let's go into the nitty gritty, the good stuff, um, the ideas for virtual recognition. Um, if you are already doing any of these things, I would love to hear about them. We're going to have a, a, a quick little discussion towards the end. Some of these ideas are, you're probably going to be like, oh my gosh, I'm already doing this, which is fantastic. I think the point of virtual recognition is it doesn't have to be hard, it just has to um, there's just, you have to think of more ways to do something virtually than you would by just handing somebody something. Um, so let's go into some details. Um, we'll start with the private one-on-one -on -one recognition. So if you do have those volunteers that you know aren't there for any praise, they don't want praise, some don't like praise. Um, what about scheduling like a virtual coffee chat, kind of a little check-in with them and, and um, you know, just you and them seeing each other face to face to provide that interaction, but it's also a time for you to really get to know them, for them to feel like you care about them as a human, as a person. Um, and I think at the end of that, um, we also feel so great about reaching out and getting to know someone. So I personally haven't done this yet, um, but I, I do want to do it. Um, a phone call is also fantastic, but there's nothing like seeing faces. Also simple, it, it doesn't sound virtual, but it's kind of virtual because you're not doing it in person, um, but sending just a personal handwritten thank you card. Include some seeds, include a gift card if there's money, or just a little note, just a little note to say thanks or that you're checking in and you care about them. Also, there's nothing wrong with an email. Um, this morning, I sent an email to one of my AmeriCorps fellows that um, she submit, she is, is providing weekly reports to her supervisor for what she's doing um, while she's teleserving. And I was so impressed by it. And so I emailed her I, and made sure her supervisor was on that email. And I just said, hey, I just want to let you know I love this. I think you're doing a great job. Um, and it was a simple email, but hopefully it was something that made her feel recognized. Um, and then call your volunteers to check in about their work. Uh, I think we forget that Getting feedback from our volunteers really means we're giving them a voice. And we're by giving them a voice, we're showing them that they're appreciated. We care about them. We care about their thoughts and um, want to hear from them. So um, requesting feedback, sending out surveys, that kind of stuff. Also, I, I would consider um, recognition and appreciation. 
group interaction. So these are some things that have always been around, but have, I have never really thought about how I can incorporate volunteers. Um, but creating a Facebook group, what if you have, I mean, some organizations have hundreds or even thousands of volunteers, but creating a Facebook group where only the volunteers are invited, it's a private group, you can have live sessions in the, in the Facebook groups, um, you can post videos, you can post memes, um, photos, but having a Facebook group just for your volunteers, I think that would be so awesome. If any of you have one, can I join it so I can see what you're doing? <laughs> um, group meetings and video check-ins. So again, Zoom, go to meeting. Um, there's nothing wrong with having a meeting just for the sake of seeing each other and saying hi. It doesn't always have to be something that is um, you know, a, a topic or something that is super important, but just a, a video check-in or a, a group meeting. Also, there are tons of great group forums and messaging forums out there. I've heard of Slack. I tried to get in there and do some stuff, but um, it was a little too much for me, but it's kind of like Microsoft Teams, which we already have. <laughs> so uh, Microsoft Teams, Slack, of course, text messages, emails, any type of group form where you can all share together as a group or celebrate successes, um, talk about some challenges and really get people to weigh in together. Um, curious, does anybody else have any ideas or anything they're doing now that encourages this kind of group interaction? I'd love to hear. Kimberly, we had Madison share um, that they just created their first uh, volunteer Facebook group on Friday. Oh, that's so awesome. Please let us know how it goes and, and kind of what the things uh, you are that's working um, as you get that going. Thank you for sharing. Anybody else? All right, well, feel free to share. I, I don't mind being interrupted. I want to hear everything from you guys. Um, so always, always feel uh, free to share with us. Storytelling. So now that we are all kind of behind a screen and not all together in an office, I'm sure you have heard that right now is the time to storytell. Tell your story. What is it that your organization needs? What are you guys doing? Why are you, uh, how are you helping your clients? Storytelling is, is kind of the rage right now. Um, while it is the rage, include volunteers in your storytelling efforts whether they are your newsletters, videos, blogs, um, social media posts, don't forget to include your volunteers while telling your story. So I, I, I have an example here from Working Wardrobes that was posted recently. It says, thanks to our remarkable volunteers, we have been able to continue to serve our clients through digital workshops. Last week, our facilitators, Dinah, won't even try to say that name, um, and Del Black and Joyce Percy had two informative career workshops. Please join us in thanking all of our volunteers for lending their expertise and taking the time to support our clients in their journeys back to work. So what I love about this post is that it thanks volunteers, but it also tells the story of what Working Wardrobes is doing right now. They are providing digital workshops. They are still serving their clients. Um, and they're utilizing their volunteers to um, help their clients get back to work. Um, so I love this example. Other ideas to include when you're incorporating volunteers is maybe um, a short Q&A interview that you have. Maybe you send a couple of questions, send it to your volunteer, ask them to fill it out. Um, so a Q&A, maybe a photo gallery of the volunteer in action. That photo gallery, I've seen, um, you know, links to Google folders with, with photos. Um, it shows the volunteer working, but it also tells the story of what your organization is doing. Uh, and then specific areas of support, you know, just really sharing like here that they are lending their expertise to help clients get back to work. What are they doing that's really transforming and, and supporting your organization? Also, um, with uh, along with storytelling, profiling a volunteer of the week, or volunteer of the month for sharing that on social media. We might have already been doing that and think, well, we're already doing that. That's nothing different or special. Well, now is a great time to really accentuate that. If you have a volunteer of the week, volunteer of the month, um, share it, post it, get it out there, tell your story. Um, coming up with uh, a fun way to do those kind of weekly or monthly things is to 
have some uh, incorporate an initiative into your social media plan. So you you know your marketing department may say on Mondays we're posting on LinkedIn, on Tuesdays we're sending out our newsletter, you know X, Y, and Z. Maybe you have something like a thankful Thursday um, to highlight a volunteer um, for that week. It could be volunteers, it could be anything, it could be people that are donating, um, but some kind of a fun little initiative that that reminds people um, to to recognize. You can also get a client testimonial. Um, there's, there's, gosh, there's nothing more moving than to hear from a client um, that you changed their life in some kind of a way. Um, in a, a training that I was in a couple a week ago, um, somebody shared that one of the ways they're thanking people that are donating, so people are dropping off food or clothing or things like that, um, that they actually had clients pre-write thank you cards. Um, and they're handing those client written thank you cards to people as they drop things off. Um, so again, it's, you know, the client may not be there to thank them, but the client is there thanking them through that thank you card. Any questions? I feel like I'm like going so fast. You had one question come up, Kimberly, prior to the transition into the, this next section, but yeah. um, Daniel was curious about any other suggestions besides seeds. Um, and does one of C have a special budget for this? Um, we will talk about a couple more suggestions at the very end, um, but I'll give you, I'll throw out another one. Let's say you have a, um, a, some people have like a volunteer parking spot. So if they're the volunteer of the month, um, they get a, a particular parking spot. Well, obviously now that parking spot is not going to be needed. So you can send them a gift card if you have a budget for it. Um, and for us, we do have a small budget for volunteer recognition. Um, I have one, I have that marked into my AmeriCorps budget. Um, and our volunteer program has um, a budget for that. It's not huge. I don't think it's ever huge in any organization. So I do think that um, I'm trying to share some ideas that are not so expensive um, so that we can all kind of partake. Um, but one of the things that, that our Ameri we ask our AmeriCorps members to do is to solicit donations. So you can get donations of gift cards um, from grocery stores and things like that, that I think could be super helpful. Hopefully that helps. That's great. We also, Wendy had a great suggestion. I love this. She said that they've been able to get actual pictures of the volunteers with the kids in their classes and sending them with a thank you letter. Oh, I love it. I love it, love it, love it. Thank you for sharing. Any others? All right, don't be afraid to, to pop into the chat if you have others to share. Um, shout out. So there's lots of ways to do a shout out. Um, you know, of course, I'm kind of focusing on social media, but there are different types of shout outs that you can give out. They can be super strategic or it can just be a thank you. Um, in this particular example, I have no idea who this person is. Um, I actually, maybe this will be helpful if you do have to craft social media posts. Is I, went on to Instagram and I, and I um, looked up the hashtag volunteer recognition to see what popped up. And so that's a great way to get ideas on, you know, kind of verbiage or ways that other folks are recognizing their volunteers or shouting them out. Um, you know, I kind of have a couple of, of, of recommendations, you know, like who is this person? Who are they? Why are you highlighting them? And what impact have they made? Pretty simple. So we've got um, Helen Mitchinson here, who um, that's who she is and, and why is she being highlighted? Because she teaches us how to live by example. Um, since 2012, she has been picking up litter along the, the stretch uh, in her neighborhood since the Adopt a Spot program started way back eight years ago. Um, so that's a quick shout out to her. Look how cute she is, I'm, you know, excited to take her little picture. <laughs> Um, but I would recommend looking up on social media, just the hashtag volunteer recognition, see what pops up. It's a great way to get ideas. Okay, I have a couple of video examples and Kevin is going to take it away here. Yep, I'm gonna gig it up, give me one second. Okay, and so we're doing some video examples. So if you can um, create a video, uh, <clears throat> a photo slideshow, something um, that is a video 
uh, to share with your volunteers, that would be amazing as well. scooping litter boxes, setting strategic priorities, filing papers, giving advice over the phone, clicker training cats, giving vaccines, mopping floors, or any of a number of different activities, what you do truly makes a difference. Cat adoption team could not exist without you. And you not only make the team and cat adoption team stronger and more capable, but you make it more diverse, more creative, and more fun. And you not only make the cat's lives better, but you make our lives better too. From the bottom of our hearts, thank you. T H A N K Y O U. Volunteers, you're the best. Big thank you to all of our Playhouse volunteers, um, especially you morning caregivers when we walk up in the morning. Have really, really dirty kittens, and we think it's going to take forever. To get these guys clean, they were never going to be able to open. Um, it's you guys do amazing work, and, and I'm so so surprised that we're able to just turn these dirty kittens and get them ready to be adopted. Um, we couldn't do what we do without you guys, especially with kitten season uh, coming up. So it's going to be another great summer, um, and just thank you guys so so much. Chantel, what do you think about our volunteers? You think they're fabulous? Kevin, thank you. All right. <clears throat> All right. Um, hopefully those were fun. Um, I wanted to, to really share the, uh oh, something's happening. We can see your screen. All right, I wanted to share um, some of the videos because it's, it's something that you all can do at your organization. You can have different folks um, submitting a little um, testimonial or a little, uh, a little clip and you can put them all together and send them to someone. Um, I do recommend if you have um, at this time, if you have, if people are still working with each other, if you're still coming into the job every day, make sure that any pictures or videos are practicing social distancing. I did, I don't know um, that the the video with them saying thank you with their masks. I don't know what time frame that was. Um, but if you were going to do something like that, make sure that they're six feet apart so that you're also modeling what you all are doing. Uh, but hopefully you like those examples. I thought it was fun to to find those. Um, another way to recognize volunteers virtually, um, I found this example, is to develop an online badge or a pin or some kind of award that uh, volunteers can put maybe in their email signature or post on um, any of their profile pages. 
So I'm not 100% sure what this first organization is, but it's really neat. It looks like they sent out an email that said, thank you so much for the hard work you do. Um, you can download one of these virtual pins and share it um, on your profile pages. So I thought that was a fantastic idea. You could even do something like um, in a signature, you know, proud volunteer of 1OC or, you know, um, three-year veteran of whatever. So I think it's, it's really uh, was a cute idea. Oops. Also, here's another example I found um, of Lion's Heart, um, an organization that, um, that provides volunteer opportunities for teens. They have a Golden Lion Award. So, you know, they shared that this um, young man has, has completed 200 hours. They shared how to earn this Golden Lion Award. Um, you know, if you're able to log a minimum of, of 150 hours, you get it. So um, another kind of virtual way to recognize your volunteers and give them accolades and, and recognition. Are any of you doing this now? And if so, I'd love to see what you're doing. Um, another way is downloadable certificate. So, you know, you don't have to wait till a graduation or the end of something huge to send a certificate. You can send a certificate for thank you for being the most amazing human. Or you can send a certificate for something specific like thanks for helping us feed 250 seniors. Um, you know, your work was extraordinary. It made a difference. Um, make sure that if you do send them anything that you have customized that you spell their name correctly because there's nothing worse than that. <laughs> um, but there are a lot of different websites and, and things where you can um, find these uh, downloadable certificates. Also, instead of calling this letters of rec, I call it letters and rec um, because volunteering looks so amazing on a resume. Let's not forget that recognition and appreciation doesn't always have to be a gift or an award. It could be that you go on their LinkedIn profile and write a, 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 um, a recognition um, or a recommendation for them. Um, having a letter of recommendation that you can send to them so that they can use that if they're looking for a job. Or even if it's appropriate, um, sending a message to, um, to the leader of, a, of an organization that's sending their employees out to volunteer. Um, or having their, their employees um, do a donation drive or something like that, um, and thanking that person for letting their employees support your organization in that way. Also, don't forget to continue to celebrate milestones, um, birthdays and volunteer anniversaries. Um, you know, for birthdays, you can send an e-card. 1OC sends e-cards out to their staff members for their birthday, and everybody can sign it and. Um, and, it, and, it, and then the person that gets it gets everybody's individual messages. It's really cute, um, really simple, easy way to recognize your volunteers' birthdays. Host a Zoom party. Um, I think I saw Madison in the chat that you're hosting a virtual party this week. Um, awesome. Something fun that you could do, get all your volunteers together and have them all sing happy birthday um, on Zoom. Or record yourself singing happy birthday or record your cute child singing happy birthday or something fun um, and then send that video to your volunteer. Um, for the volunteer anniversaries, uh, you know, those online pins or badges, creating an online photo book. You can do an actual photo book that you send to them as a gift through something like Shutterfly or Snapfish or just a simple Google folder that has a bunch of pictures um, of maybe them with their friends, their friend volunteers, or them with your um, staff members, things like that. Um, also try to collect staff quotes and messages, and you can put that together either in an email, you can slap it on a Word document, you could, um, you know, put a little cute border around it and send them quotes and messages from staff members that are thanking them for their service. Kevin, did I see a chat? Yeah, we had, um, Ann made a great point or something that she's experiencing at her organization that some of the volunteers are kind of jealous if they highlight one volunteer opposed to another. So she likes the idea of a certificate or award that gives everyone an opportunity to attain. That, that she does have one or do we have one? I think she was just saying she likes the idea of a certificate. 
Oh, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, because you can make the certificate for whatever you want. Um, so, yeah, I, and that is a thing, you know, it kind of goes along with those star volunteers that kind of tend to stand out, you know, like the squeaky wheel is the one that you hear. Um, so, yeah, customizing certificates is a perfect way to recognize everyone at any point and meeting them where they are in their service with you. Um, lastly, have a virtual event. Um, 10C is actually, we are transforming our spirit of volunteerism into a virtual event. Um, what we're doing between 11.30 and 1.30, which is what the time that the event would have been, um, is we are going to be sharing videos, sharing profiles of all of our um, nominees. And as a team, as a staff, we are all going to be kind of sharing out and, and posting those um, those posts that 10C is putting out. So we're going to be sharing, we're going to be liking, we're going to be commenting to get that um, that volunteer celebration and bring it bring it to life. Um, so a virtual event is can be whatever you want it to be, but I think the best the best way to make it really effective is to include your organization and, and folks in your organization, even your other volunteers, um, in helping with that. And then now we're going to go back to um, in the beginning when I asked you all to think of a way that you have been thanked or a way that you've been recognized that's not virtual. Um, I'd love to take a couple of examples and see if as a group we can transform what you have been thanked, uh, the way that you have been thanked, um, and transform it into something virtual. So does any one of you want to share an example of how you've been thanked recently? Feel free to put that in the chat box, or if you want to just unmute yourself, you can also go ahead and share if you'd like. Yeah, please feel free to unmute yourself. You guys haven't been thanked? Well, I thank you. <laughs> Anything, any examples, even just one? Uh, one said I received a gift card to Starbucks at our monthly meeting. Okay. Um, well. Yeah. Is there is there a way other than sending a gift card that we can think of um, making that virtual? Who has a great idea? I have a great idea. Um, I would say since one of my ideas would be to send a gift card, what about sending the gift card um, and scheduling that one-on-one -on -one chat with the person, having your little coffee chat on Zoom. So you send them the, the $5 gift card. You say, hey, you know, Sarah, please go to Starbucks, pick up your favorite drink, come back, and let's have a little chat together. I want to talk to you. Um, so maybe coupling it with something like that. Madison said, Kimberly, she had a financial committee member bring her flowers to thank for keeping all the volunteers on track. Oh, I love that. So what, what would be a good way to turn that virtual? If you normally would give somebody flowers, what can we do instead? You could have those flowers delivered and record a video with a personal thank you and send that to them. Super cute. I love it. I love it, love it, love it. All right. Well, so that's kind of um, in putting this training together. That's kind of where I personally started is what ways do I normally thank someone? What ways have I been thanked in the past? Um, and how can I turn that virtual? It doesn't have to be huge. Doesn't have to be big. Um, it can be if you have the funds, but um, it's really just thinking about you don't have to change everything up so much. You can kind of not reinvent the wheel and um, and just see how you can spin it a different way. So something for you all to think about. And let's see. Um, so that's the end of that piece. And then we have a little last piece at the very end and we'll, we'll be done. So um, if you have any questions, type them in the chat and we'll talk about them at the end. Um, so this section is where we're going to kind of talk about being a social volunteer influencer. This is a, a initiative that 10C is doing right now, and I, I thought I would share it because it's 
um, it's something that you can think about in terms of creating some kind of initiative or um, social media push with your organization. So typically during, um, during uh, Earth Day, which is one of our national days of service, we have volunteers and, and companies going out to our nonprofits and helping them, you know, with whatever it is that their day of service project is. Well, right now we're not, we're not sending people out. So what we want to do is during Earth Day and Earth Week, we'll consider it, is start to share. We're, we're becoming social volunteer influencers of our organization by sharing the good work they're doing. If there's a post that somebody has posted, make sure to like it, share it, comment on it. Um, the more activity that it gets, the higher up it goes um, in, you know, in your new, in news feeds and such. And so we can be great neighbors and great partners of each other by really sharing and appreciating each other's work. Um, social volunteer influencer is people like us who, uh, who, you know, are, are connoisseurs of service um, and uh, can really help organizations to get the word out. Um, this week, 1OC is doing a, a, a social volunteer influencer challenge. You will see some stuff coming out on our social media that has some days, you know, today we're going to be, you know, sharing a video. Tomorrow we're going to be doing this. So it gives kind of different days and, and what we're doing as social volunteer influencers. Um, but we are also going to be sharing posts from the community and things that we're seeing um, that we want to um, help promote for our organization, especially during this time. And then here's an example, um, you know, for National Pet Parents Day, um, talking about man's best friend and, um, you know, what can you do to share a post and like this um, organization and the person that they're, that they're highlighting. Um, so here's just a simple, quick example. And then here is what we're going to be sending out. So like, ask your volunteers to like your mission. Um, take a seven-day social volunteer influencer challenge. Share your stories, recognize volunteer deeds, and post your virtual opportunities. So right now we do have um, uh, our emergency volunteer center is activated through the county. Uh, 1OC is actually the, um, the official uh, emergency volunteer center for the, the county of Orange. So if you have urgent needs, if you have ways to get volunteers involved, please let me know and we can get your posting on our emergency volunteer center to help you get volunteers uh, and support that you need. And volunteers don't have to be physical. It could be skilled based, working remotely, um, supporting your operations in some way. And I think with that, I'm done. Any last questions, comments, um, feedback? I appreciate those of you that have been able to share and um, I love to hear what everybody's doing so I can get some ideas. Lots of just thank yous in the chat box from everyone. But any final questions? We have <clears throat> a couple more minutes till we're at the top of the hour. So if you have any lingering questions, um, now's your time. Also make uh, Kimberly's email available in case you have some follow-up questions that you'd like to ask her specifically. If not, thank you, everyone. I love spending this hour with you. Um, please reach out to me if you have any questions. If your organization, here's my shameless plug, um, if your organization is interested in hosting an AmeriCorps fellow in the fall, um, I would be happy to send you information on what that looks like and, and what that could mean for your organization. So please reach out to me, and I am happy to share. Uh, but otherwise, keep up the good work. Keep up everything you're doing, um, and, you know, cliche, but we're all in this together because we really are. So thank you all.